Good evening from Comiskey Park. This is Kurt Berglund with Payoff Pitch Dream Season Baseball. Tonight we have a good one. We are up to game 14 in the mini season that we are playing with 26 of my favorite teams from the last 60 years or so uh, as uh, developed by Payoff Pitch Baseball. And tonight we're getting close to the end. It's game 14 for both of these ball clubs. And I want to set the stage a little bit for you for what's at stake for both teams. The visiting club tonight is the 1987 Detroit Tigers. They were American League, I'm sorry, American League East champions in 1987. They are 9-4 and four and in first place right now among the 13 teams in the American League. With five games to play, they have a one-game lead over their second-place competitor, and it looks good for them making the playoffs right now. Of course, they want top seed. Um... They are two games ahead of six other teams, which are at seven and six. And so they need to play well because there is one team right on their heels and there's another, that's the 69 Tigers, and there's another um, seven, no, there's another five teams right on behind them. So... Nine and four looks good right now. Um, it looks like if you do the math and kind of play out the matchups in the American League, 12 wins gets you into the playoffs. 12 and six would do it. So three more wins out of the five they have to play should get them into the playoffs to get top seed. So that would put them at three and two in the last five games. To get the top seed, I'm thinking they're gonna need four wins probably uh, to do that, four and one and five and oh, of course, would clinch it for sure that they would get home field throughout the American League playoffs. They are the visiting team tonight, the 1987 Detroit Tigers. On the mound for them is their ace, Jack Morris. He was 18 and 11 with a 3.38 earned run average in 1987. And he was Jack Morris, just nasty. Um, the home team tonight is the 1983 Chicago White Sox. Their record is seven and six, and they are one of the clubs tied in third place it's with uh, four other ball clubs at seven and six at this moment. They have a different problem. Their problem is that there's only five teams making the playoffs in each league. Of the 13 in each league, five of them make the playoffs. Right now, there are seven teams that are either tied with them or ahead of them in the playoff picture. So their position in the playoffs is by no means assured. They are at seven and six. And... Of course, the only way they can get to that 12 and 6 number is to run the table. So I don't think they're going to do that. But they may be able to make the playoffs with, uh, they should be able, I would think, to make the playoffs with 11 wins. So if they go 4 and 1, they're probably okay. And if they go 3 and 2, that puts them at 10 and 8. And that puts them in the gaggle, and they may not make it. So they got to play real well, and starting tonight. Their pitcher on the mound tonight is Lamar Hoyt. He went 24-10 and 10 with a 3.66 earned run average in 1983. He was the ace of that staff and did not throw as hard as Morris certainly did, but he had pinpoint control, and he was definitely a big game pitcher. So... Uh, that sets the stage for these two clubs. Lots on the line for both. Both of them have played very well, but both of them have to keep doing it to get to where they want to be. Let's get to the lineups. For the visiting Detroit Tigers, 
This is their lineup tonight against Lamar Hoyt. Leading off in center field, it's Chet Lemon. Batting second at second base, Lou Whitaker. Batting third in left field, Kirk Gibson. Batting fourth at shortstop, Alan Trammell. Batting fifth at first base, Darrell Evans. Batting sixth and doing the catching tonight, Mac Noakes. Batting seventh and playing right field, Pat Sheridan. Batting eighth and playing first base, it's Dave Bergman. And batting ninth and playing third base, it's Tom Brookins. And on the mound, as I told you, is Jack Morris 18 and 11 on the season. For the 83 White Sox, leading off and playing center field, Rudy Law. Batting second and playing first base, Tom Pachorek. Batting third and playing right field, it's Harold Baines. Batting fourth and playing DH, Greg Luzinski. Batting fifth and playing left field, Ron Kittle. And here we go. Yep, grabbed the wrong guy, so let's make that adjustment. Batting sixth and playing third base, it's Vance Law. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, Scott Fletcher. Batting eighth and playing catcher, Mark Hill. And batting ninth and playing second base, Julio Cruz. For those of you wondering where Carlton Fisk is, he was injured in game nine. He will be back uh, for the next game, game 15, and of course, throughout the rest of the season. Mark Hill has filled in better than expected, for sure, for Fisk during his absence. But Fisk is back tomorrow for the Sox. All right, so we are ready to go. Chet Lemon stepping into the batter's box. Lamar Hoyt has finished his warm-up tosses. And we're ready with the first set of our game 14 games for you on the payoff pitch dream season. Thank you so much for joining us. Lamar Hoyt's pitch to Chet Lemon. is grounded to Julio Cruz, who's going to throw it to Pachorik for out number one. We are underway in Chicago. Lou Whitaker steps to the plate. Lou, 294 against right-handers on the season. The pitch to him is also grounded to Julio Cruz, who's going to throw it to Pachorik one more time, and that's two gone in the top of the first. And now it's Kirk Gibson. Lamar Hoyt winds, and this one is hit toward Vance Law. And it is off the heel of his glove, and Gibson, busting his tail down the first baseline, makes it safely. So with two outs, the Tigers have a runner at first base, and it'll be Alan Trammell the Tigers MVP candidate in 1987. He hit 334 against right-handers, Hoyt to the belt. The pitch home to Trammell, grounded to Cruz. He's gonna go the short way to Fletcher this time and that will force Gibson for out number three. And we go to the bottom of the first. We're scoreless at Comiskey Park. Jack Morris coming to the mound. He will face Law, Pachorik, and Baines for the Sox. In the bottom of the first, Morris winds, and the pitch to Rudy is a base hit to center field. And now we've got our first interesting little scenario at play. Matt Noakes is behind the plate this evening. And that's interesting because he does not throw especially well. Um... So Law, that opens up the Sox running game. Mike Heath is on the bench tonight for Detroit. He is the arm of the pair, and Noakes is the bat of the pair, and so we'll see how this works out. Pachorik is at first base. Law works on his lead. Morris to the belt. He checks Rudy, pauses for a moment. The pitch home. There goes Law, and the throw down to Whitaker is not in time. Law steals second base, and he's now in scoring position for Pachorik. 
The count is 0-1 to Tom. Morris to the belt again. Checks Law at second base now. The pitch to Petork is lifted in the air to center, not deep. Here comes Chet Lemon. He will make the catch, and that's out number one in the first inning. Bain steps in. 3-0-2 against right-handers for Harold. And this is a liner to left that's going to fall in front of Gibson. Law advances to third and stops there. Gibby gets the ball into second base, and there's runners at the corners for the White Sox in the bottom of the first. Not the scenario Tiger manager Sparky Anderson was looking for when this game started. One out, Luzinski at the plate. The Tiger infield is at double play depth for the Bull. Morris to the belt, the pitch. He takes ball four, and now the bases are dripping with White Sox, and it's Ron Kittle. Tigers infield still at double play depth. Morris to the belt. There's Law at third, Baines at second, and Luzinski at first. The pitch to Kittle. Hey, struck him out on some high heat that Kittle did not catch up with. That's a first strikeout for Morris on the day. And Vance Law now with the Sox last chance to drive in a run in the bottom of the first. Sox fans tense. Morris to the belt, the pitch. Ground ball Whitaker, he's gonna go the short way to Trammell and that will retire the White Sox in the first. They. Load the bases with one out and do not score. We go to the second, and we're scoreless in Chicago. Hoyt coming back out. Playoff-type atmosphere here at Comiskey Park. Both these teams battling. Evans, Noakes, and Sheridan up for Detroit in the second inning. Hoyt winds and throws... This has popped up. Vance Law calling for it and takes it on the infield grass. One man gone in the second. Matt Noakes comes up to 307 against righties for Matt. This is grounded to Pachorek. He's going to take it himself. And there's two down. And now Sheridan. In season acquisition for Detroit from Kansas City. And he grounds this one to Fletcher. Scott up with it and throws to Pachorek for out number three in the second. A one, two, three second for Hoyt. And we go to the bottom of two with no score in Chicago. It'll be Fletcher, Mark Hill, and Julio Cruz coming up for the Sox. Fletcher, 244 against right-handers in his rookie season. This is grounded to Brookins at third. Tom throws to Evans at first for the out. One gone in the White Sox second. Morris trying to right the ship after a shaky first inning. Mark Hill stands in. 230 against right-handers. Mark grounds this one to Trammell. He's got it, and he throws to Evans for out number two. And here comes Juice, Julio Cruz, 238. An in-season acquisition for the White Sox from Seattle in exchange for Tony Bernazard. Hey, strikes him out. That's the second for Morris on the evening. And out number three in the White Sox second. We go to the third and we're scoreless in Chicago. For Detroit, in the top of the third, it's Bergman and then Brookins, and then to the top of the order with Chet Lemon coming up. Dave Bergman, 275. Sparky used everybody in 1987, partly because he had a lot of injuries to deal with. This is hit in the air to center. Rudy Law over into right center a little bit, and he's going to make the catch for out number one. Tom Brookins, 241 against righties. Hoyt winds, and the pitch is a base hit to left field. It's between Fletcher and Law, and it sneaks through there. Kittle collects it and throws it back in. Rookins is aboard with a single, 
with one man out in the third. Lemon up, 279, but a 378 on base average against righties. Hoyt to the belt. The pitch to Chet. Okay, that's ball one. And this is a base hit to center field. Falls in front of Rudy Law. Brooklyn stops at second. The Tigers have two on with nobody out. In the third, Whitaker comes to the plate, 294 against righties. One man out, Brookins at second, Lemon at first, Hoyt to the belt, the pitch home to Whitaker. He struck him out for out number two. That's Hoyt's first strikeout on the evening. There's two outs in the top of the third now for Gibson. 282 for Kirk on the season. First full year in left field for Kirk. Hoyt to the belt. Checks the runners, the pitch. Hit to center. Not too deep. Laws back a few steps, and he one-hands it for out number three. Hoyt gets into and then works out of trouble in the third. So we go to the bottom of the third. It's the top of the order for the Sox. Rudy Law, Tom Pachorek, and Harold Baines coming up for the Sox. Against Jack Morris, Rudy Law one for one and stole a base in the first inning. The pitch from Morris is hit to center, but not deep. Here comes Chet Lemon, and that's one man gone. Tom Pachork, 0 for 1 on the day. Morris winds and pitches, and he strikes out. That's Morris's third on the day. And with two outs and nobody on, it's Baines coming to the plate. Harold is 1 for 1. Morris winds. And there's a base hit to center field. Two for two for Harold Baines. And with two outs, there's a man aboard for Luzinski. The bowl walked in the first inning. Morris to the belt. The pitch home. This is hit toward Evans. He gloves it and flips to Morris covering the bag. And that will retire the White Sox in the third. We've played three and we're scoreless in Chicago. Pitcher's duel that we thought we were gonna get, which now that I've said that, I've opened up the floodgates for a dozen runs. Uh, Trammell, Evans, and Noakes for the Tigers in the top of the fourth. Allen is 0 for 1 on the day. Both teams playing for big playoff stakes. The pitch home is grounded Pachoric. He gloves it and tosses to Hoyt, covering the bag, and there's one man out in the fourth. Here comes Evans, big-time power source with 34 homers in 1987. Hoyt winds and delivers a ground ball to Fletcher. Scott throws to Pachoric, and there's two men gone now in the fourth, and now it's Noakes. Matt is 0 for 1 on the day. Hoyt winds and pitches a comebacker to Lamar. He's going to turn and throw to Pachoric, and that will retire the Tigers in the fourth. We've played three and a half. We're still scoreless. Morris coming back out. He will face Kittle, Vance Law, and Scott Fletcher in the bottom of the fourth for the White Sox. Need to do a little quick housekeeping here. Shuffle things up and then we'll be ready. Ron Kittle is 0 for 1 with the strikeout back in the first inning. He had a hot start to the mini season that we're doing here and calling the dream season, but he has cooled off since then. Uh, Morris winds and pitches to Kittle. 
He lifts this one in the air to right field. This is Pat Sheridan with room toward the foul line. Makes the catch in fair territory, and there's one man out in the fourth. Law of Anselot comes to the plate against Morris, and here comes the pitch. Hit to center. Chet Lemon right in his tracks. Two gone, and now Scott Fletcher. Scott is 0 for 1. Morris winds and delivers. Hey, struck him out. Strikeout number four for Jack Morris. And a 1 2 3 fourth inning for the Tigers' ace. We go to the fifth. Nothing, nothing in Chicago. Bottom third of the Tiger order up in the fifth. Sheridan, Bergman, Brookins. Sheridan 0 for 1 on the day. Hoyt winds and delivers. Hey, struck him out. Strikeout number 2 for Hoyt on the game. And that'll bring up Bergman. Bergman's 0 for 1. Dave is the DH tonight. Hoyt winds and pitches. He lifts this one to center toward left center. Rudy Law on the run. He's going to get there for out number two and gets a nice hand from the partisan White Sox faithful. And Brookins comes up one for one on the day. And this time, Tom hits it to right. Baines coming in for his first chance of the ball game. And he makes the catch. It's a 1-2-3 fifth for Hoyt, and it's eight in a row retired for the White Sox right-hander. We are halfway through this one. It's no score as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Mark Hill, Booter, coming up with Julio Cruz on deck, and then the top of the Sox order with Rudy Law after him. Booter is 0 for 1. Morris winds and the pitch. Hits it to center toward left center. Lemon gets to run this time, but he's going to get there. It holds up, and Chet makes the catch for out number one. Julio Cruz comes up. Was a strikeout victim of Morris back in the second inning. Morris winds and pitches. This is grounded to Evans. Daryl's going to take it to the bag himself. There's two gone in the bottom of the fifth. And now Rudy Law, who's one for two on the day. Morris winds the pitch. He walks Rudy Law. We're back to that scenario again. Noakes not an accomplished defensive catcher, but in there because he slugs like in 1987, very few others did. So Pachorik is at the plate. He's 0 for 2 on the day. Law to working on his lead at first base. Morris to the belt, checks Law at first, the pitch home, there goes Rudy, the throw down to Trammell is not in time, and Law is safe with another stolen base. Rudy had 77 of them and was only caught 12 times in the 1983 season. He's down at second with Pachorik at the plate. Tommy 0 for 2. Morris to the belt, looks at Law at second, the pitch home. This is a base hit into right field. It drops in front of Sheridan. Rudy Law around third. Jim Leland, the third base coach for the White Sox, is going to is gonna wave Rudy Law with two men out. He scores. The throw is late, and Rudy Law is in there with the first run of the ball game. Tom Pachorik drives in that run, and Baines will come up now. Working on a two-for-two two game. Pachorik at first. Law is in. It's one nothing White Sox. Morris to the belt checks Pachorik. The pitch to Baines. Hit in the air to left. Kirk Gibson running toward the line, but he's going to get there. And he does. Four out, number three. We've...
played five. The tie is broken. The Sox break through with a single run on a walk, a stolen base by Rudy Law, and a single by Tom Pachorek. They're not bludgeoning anybody, but they did get a run. It's one nothing White Sox after five. Top of the order for the 87 Tigers now. Lemon, Whitaker, and Gibson coming up. Hoyt winds and delivers to Chet. This is grounded to Vance Law. He gloves it and throws to Pachorek for out number one. That's nine in a row for Lamar Hoyt. Lou Whitaker's 0 for 2. Hoyt's only allowed two hits. Hoyt winds and pitches. This is hit into right field. Down the line. Pass Pachork. It's going to get into the corner. Baines has to go get it. Whitaker around first. He will take second on a double. He hit 38 of those on the 1987 season. And... Now it's Gibson with the tying run at second base for the Tigers and one man out. Hoyt to the belt, looks at Whitaker. The pitch home is lifted to right. Baines coming in a few steps, lining himself up. Whitaker bluffs the tag and returns to or solds at second base as Baines's throw comes into Fletcher at the cutoff position. Trammell comes up now with Whitaker still at second base, but now two men out, and Allen is 0 for 2. Hoyt is at the belt, the pitch home, lifted to left. Kittle, not too far to run, and it's a good thing. Ron gets there, and that retires the Tigers in the sixth. We have played five and one-half innings. It's one nothing White Sox in Comiskey Park. For the Sox in the bottom of the sixth against Jack Morris, it's Luzinski, Kittle, and Vance Law coming to the plate. The bowl is 0 for 1 with a walk. The pitch from Morris. This is grounded toward Trammell. He gloves it and throws to Evans for the first out of the inning. One gone. Now Kittle, 0 for 2. Morris winds and delivers. Hey, struck him out. That's Jack's fifth on the evening. That's Kittle's second. And Vance Law comes up with two outs and nobody on against Morris. Jack winds and throws. Ground ball trammel. Allen gloves it and throws to Evans. That retires the White Sox. One, two, three in the sixth. We go to the seventh. It's one nothing White Sox. Hoyt throwing a three hitter in a game that the White Sox really need to have. Evans at the plate, 0 for 2 for Darrell. Noakes on deck, and then Pat Sheridan for the Tigers. Hoyt winds and pitches. This is a ground ball toward Julio Cruz. He gloves it and throws to Pachorek, and there's one man out in the seventh. Noakes in there, 0 for 2 for Matt on the day. The pitch from Hoyt is taken, a very rare ball four delivered by Hoyt. Only 31 walks in 250 innings for Lamar in 83. So Noakes is on. It is tempting to run for him, but they're not going to yet. Sheridan is 0 for 2. He's in there now. Hoyt to the belt, the pitch home. Is grounded to Fletcher. Scott goes to Cruz for 1. The relay to Pachorek is not in time. Sheridan beats the rap. And with two outs now, it's Bergman. Dave popped six homers in limited duty for the Tigers in 87, so he's got a little bit of juice in that bat. He's 0 for 2 in this game, however. Hoyt to the belt. The pitch. This is hit toward Pachorek.
Tommy dives and makes the play, flips to Hoyt covering the bag, and that retires the Tigers in the seventh. It's time to stretch them out at Comiskey, and it's one nothing White Sox. Morris coming back out, the competitor that he is. Fletcher, Hill, and Cruz, the bottom third of the White Sox order coming up in the bottom of the seventh for Chicago. Scotty is 0 for 2. Hoyt would love an insurance run, and so would his manager, Tony La Russa. You remember him. He's the manager of the White Sox in 1983. Tony La Russa. Yikes. Morris winds and pitches. This is to left field. Kirk Gibson in his tracks. There's one gone. Five in a row retired now for Morris. Hill to the plate. Mark is 0 for 2. Pitch to him is a base hit, grounded up the middle, past Whitaker and Trammell. The booter is on at first base, and it's Cruz coming up with one man out. Hill, no threat to steal. Morris to the belt, checks him anyway. The pitch home is... Is grounded to Whitaker. Lou goes to Trammell for one. The relay to Evans is not in time as Cruz beats the rap at first, but Cruz is fast as well. 24 steals for him in half a season, basically, with the White Sox. Uh, how are they going to play this? So Cruz works on his lead. Rudy Law is at the plate. Morris to the belt, checks Cruz. There goes Cruz. And the throw down to Whitaker is not in time. Cruz steals second, third stolen base for the White Sox on the game. And Rudy Law has taken strike one. One for two for Rudy on the day. Sox have an insurance run in scoring position, but there are two men out. Morris to the belt, checks Cruz. At second, the pitch home is hit to center. A dying quail. Here comes Chet Lemon. The dive, and he's got it for out number three. Chet Lemon may have saved the ball game for Detroit right there. one nothing. The score is preserved. The deficit is preserved for the Tigers as we go to the eighth. It's one nothing White Sox. Now we're going to see some action in the Sox bullpen. It's Dennis Lamp and Juan Augusto are warming up for double-barreled action for the Sox. Tom Brookins is going to lead off. He's one for two. He's going to lead off against Hoyt. Lamar winds and delivers. Hit in the air to right field. Baines coming on, and that's one man gone in the eighth. Five outs to go, and the Sox get their eighth win of the season and move to within a game of first place, when you look at it that way. Um, but there's a lot of games to be played today, so we'll see how that shakes out. Baines, or I'm sorry, Lemon up, uh, one for three. Hoyt winds and delivers, and this is hit to the gap. It's going to split Rudy Law and Harold Baines, and look at Lemon go. He's got himself a sliding headfirst triple, and with one out in the eighth, the Tigers have the tying run only 90 feet away for Lou Whitaker. Kirk Gibson is on deck. Hoyt in a major jam. A runner has not reached third base yet, and he's only had one man. Oh, that's not true. He's had two men reach second. one nothing White Sox. Whitaker at the plate. Hoyt to the belt. The pitch home. It is a base hit to center that drops in front of Rudy Law. We are tied at one. Lemon trots home, and Whitaker's aboard with a single. Kirk Gibson comes to the plate. 1-1 ball game. Whitaker at first. Gibson 0 for 3 on the night. Hoyt to the belt. The pitch home. It's a hanger. 
It's a hanger and it's jerked to right field. Way back, it's gonna be off the wall. Off the wall, bounces toward Rudy Law. He runs it down. Whitaker is gonna score all the way from first. Here comes Gibson to third. Sliding, he is safe. And that will give the Tigers another triple in the inning, but more importantly, a second run in the ball game there ahead, two nothing in the eighth. Trammell coming up. Tony LaRusse is holding up four fingers. They're going to walk Alan Trammell. And now out of the dugout he comes. And he's holding up his left hand. He wants Juan Augusto. Hoyt's day is done. Augusto, one of the lefties in the Sox bullpen. The Sox went from a 1-0 lead to a 2-0 deficit in about four batters here. Um, so, Evans is 0 for 3. Let's tell you about Hoyt, first of all. Lamar went seven in the third innings, allowed six hits. He gave up um, two runs, both earned, but both base runners on base now. Gibson at third and Trammell at first are his responsibility. He walked one, he struck out two, and he didn't allow any home runs. Juan Augusto is on to face Evans, the left-handed first baseman for the... left-handed hitting first baseman for the Tigers. Juan uh, pitched in 39 games in 1983... Uh, seven saves, 41 innings, two and two record with a 410 earned run average. He is left handed. The Sox infield is going to play in. And I guess we're ready. Augusto to the belt, Gibson at third, Trammell at first, the pitch home to Evans. It's a base hit for Evans into short right field. Baines gloves it and throws to Fletcher. Trammell stops at second. Gibson scores from third. It's 3-1. Tigers in the eighth. Noakes coming to the plate. Not an accomplished hitter against lefties, but they've got a 3-1 lead now, so he's going to bat. Augusto to the belt. Checks Trammell at second. The pitch home. He walked Mac Noakes. That's not what you want to do. The bases are dripping with Tigers now, and Pat Sheridan comes to the plate. We're going to see a pinch hitter now. It's going to be Larry Herndon. Going to bat for Sheridan, the platoon partner for Sher with Sheridan in right field down the stretch for the Tigers. So Sheridan's day is done. He was 1 for 3, 0 oh for 3. Herndon comes to the plate. 373 against left handers. And here comes Tony LaRussa. He's holding up his right hand now, and he wants Dennis Lamp. Warming up in the Sox bullpen is Salome Barojas and Kevin Hickey. More double-barreled action for the Sox as LaRusse is looking to anybody to stop the bleeding here in the eighth. Herndon will hit against Lamp, 146 against righties. The bases are full, Trammell at third, Evans at second, Noakes at first, and one man out. Sox infield is in, Lamp to the belt, the pitch. It's a base hit into right field that drops in front of Baines. Trammell will score. Evans will score. Noakes goes to third, and it's now 5-1 to one Tigers 
with a five-run explosion in the eighth inning. Sparky Anderson clapping in the Tiger dugout. Now it's Bergman. Noakes at third, uh, Herndon at first, and Bergman at the plate. The Sox infield remains in. Lamp to the belt, the pitch. Is a line drive base hit that drops in front of Rudy Law for a base hit for Bergman. Herndon stops at second. And the romp is on. It's six to one Tigers in the top of the eighth. Brookins comes to the plate. He flew out to start the inning. And there's two men on for the Tigers. Herndon at second, Bergman at first. Brookins comes up now, one for three. I almost pinch hit for him to lead off the inning, but I decided to wait, and now he's up again. Lamp to the belt. The pitch to Brookins. This is grounded to Pechorek. He whirls and goes to Fletcher for one. The relay to Lamp is a soul-crushing, rally-killing double play, but it doesn't really crush their souls too badly because the 87 Tigers put up a six spot in the eighth inning to take a 6-1 lead over the White Sox. Morris coming out for the bottom of the eighth. White Sox fans not happy and expressing their displeasure. The Tigers have a five-run lead and Jack Morris on the mound with six outs to go, so they got to like their chances. However, they are also starting a couple of men in the bullpen. Hernandez, Willie Hernandez and Mike Henneman, the short men for the Tigers... In 87, Pachorik stands in. He's one for three, needs to get something going. It'll be Pachorik, Her uh, Pachorik, Baines, and Luzinski. Herndon is the new right fielder for the Tigers. And Morris winds and delivers to Pachorik. Hey, strikes him out for strikeout number six for Jack Morris. One gone in the bottom of the eighth. Harold Baines, two for three. Morris winds and the pitch. A looping liner to right field toward the line. It drops in fair territory. Here goes Baines for second, and he will get there. It's a double with one out for Baines. Morris might be tiring. Sparky on the top step of the dugout. Luzinski stands in. 0 for two with a walk for Greg. On the evening, Morris to the belt, looks at Baines, the pitch home. Ground ball, Trammell. He scoops it and throws to Evans for out number two. And now it's Kittle, who's 0 for 3 with a pair of strikeouts. Morris to the belt, the pitch. Hit to center. Going to drive Lemon back a few steps, but it's not going to get out of here. Chet one-hands it, and that is the end of the eighth for the Sox. We go to the ninth. 6-1 Tigers in Comiskey Park. It'll be Lemon, Whitaker, and Gibson to face Dennis Lamp for the White Sox. Got to hold them where they're at and hope for something divine in the bottom of the ninth. Chet Lemon is two for three with a big triple in the eighth inning and eventually scored a run. I'm sorry, Chet Lemon's two for four. He hit a big triple in the eighth, eventually scored the first run of the inning to tie the ball game at that time for the Tigers. They subsequently went on and had a huge inning of six runs against the 1983 American League Western Division champions. So Lemon is up there again now looking for his third hit. 
Lamp winds and delivers. It's a comebacker, gloved by Denny. He's going to flip to Pachoric for out number one. Now it's Whitaker. Lou is two for four. Lamp winds. The pitch to Lou. Is hit over Law's head to left center field. It's going to one-hop the wall. Whitaker is around first. He's going to get to second. Rudy Law collects it and throws it back in, and it's a one-out double for Whitaker, his second double of the game. Now it's Gibson. Barojas and Hickey are throwing now with a little more spirit in that dugout in the uh, Sox bullpen. Let's see how they want to play this. Uh, first base is open. There's one man out. Whitaker is at second. Gibson is up. Gibson's one for four. He also tripled in the eighth. They're going to go after Gibson. Lamp to the belt. He looks at Whitaker. The pitch home to Gibby. Hey, struck him out. Two gone. And now it's Trammell. In the same situation in the eighth, they walked Trammell to get to Evans, and Evans made him pay for it. So they're going to go after Trammell this time. Lamp to the belt. The pitch home. Hit to left. Kittle on the run. He's going to get there and make the catch for the third out. Whitaker is stranded at second base. We go to the bottom of the ninth. 6-1 Tigers. It'll be Vance Law, Scott Fletcher, and the booter, Mark Hill, coming to the plate. Hernandez and Henneman are ready in the Tiger bullpen if needed. Vance Law is going to be called back for a pinch hitter. And here comes Jerry Hairston to bat for the Sox third baseman. Jerry Hairston, 301 against right-handers with a 391 on base average in 83. So we'll see how he does. Morris winds and delivers, and this one is a hanger. Hairston toward the right field line, toward the foul pole, fair or foul. It is a fair ball. Hairston has left the building, so has Elvis. It's 6-2. to two. Scott Fletcher is due. Sparky on the top step of the dugout, but they're not going to get him yet. It's 6-2 Tigers. There's nobody out in the ninth inning. Fletcher is due. They're calling him back. It's going to be Greg Walker to pinch hit for Fletcher. Scott ends, ends and 0 for 3 evening. And Walker comes to the plate, a 280 hitter against righties. Morris winds and the pitch to Walker. Hey, struck him out. That strikeout number seven for Jack. One gone in the ninth. Mark Hill, the booter, coming to the plate. He's one for three. Morris winds and the pitch to the booter. He takes ball four and walks Mark Hill. And here comes Sparky. He wants somebody else. He's taking those baby steps he always took, walking to the mound. And now he looks up and waves his right hand for Mike Henneman. Mike Henneman is going to be called on to go after the save, although Willie Hernandez is still throwing in the Tiger bullpen. Henneman, one of the closers for the Tigers in 87. A right-hander, he got into 55 games, 7 saves, 96 innings, an 11-3 and record with a 298 earned run average. He was a good one for the Tigers for several years. He's in there now against Julio Cruz. Mark Hill is at first. There's one man out, and the Sox are down by four runs. Rudy Law is on deck. Henneman to the belt. Checks Hill at first. He's not going anywhere. The pitch home. Hey, strikes out Julio Cruz. Juice is gone, and there's two outs. 
for Rudy Law. Rudy, one for three. He scored the Sox run. Henneman to the belt. The pitch to Rudy Law. Line shot. Trammell leaps. He's got it. And that will end the ball game. A 6-2 victory for the 1987 Detroit Tigers. So let's talk about what that does to the playoff picture in the American League. But first, your totals for the victorious American League East champion, 1987 Tigers. Six runs on eight hits, and they committed no, no, no errors for the vanquished 1983 Chicago White Sox. Two runs on six hits, and they committed one error. Winning pitcher is Jack Morris. Losing pitcher is Lamar Hoyt. The save goes to Mike Henneman. The Tigers, by virtue of winning, move their record to 10-4 and four and will stay atop the American League playoff picture in the first place in the American League by at least one game, uh, maybe two. They're currently a game and a half in front of the 69 Tigers. Uh, the 83 White Sox are at 7-7 seven and seven with four games to play and drop to fourth place in the American League so they're going to need some help. Uh, but they're not out of it. They're not out of it, but they're going to need some help to get into the top five for the playoff picture. That is where we stand at the end of game 14 for these two teams. I want to thank you so much for your support of the Payoff Pitch Dream season that we've been doing on my channel. Uh, my name is Kurt Berglund. we got to stick together, people. I uh, hope you have a good night, and tomorrow's game uh, will be the 1977 Red Sox against the 1977 Yankees playing their 14th game. Both of those teams are at 7-6 and six as well, and so they're in that mix with the 83 White Sox fighting for a playoff spot, and both teams are in it. Hope you can join us. Thank you again. So long, everybody.